Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Pantheon Plus's video. Uh, today we are going to be talking about Druids. So last time we talked a little about the Cleric. Uh, same format, we're going to talk through the spells here. Uh, above me in the video here I have Haya. He actually moves now. We have a little bit cleaner video capture, so that's nice. Now with animation. Yeah, before we thought maybe he was like a regular Canadian where their head lifted off and we just couldn't tell because it was delayed, but turns out that doesn't happen. Uh, and not on camera, but in the background we have Xiao, so Xiao, welcome. Hello. Hopefully you guys are going to be able to hear everybody a lot better this time around. Uh, I'll be a little bit louder probably, but I think you're going to be able to fully make everybody out, so apologize for that. So yeah, today, talking about the Druid, our plan is to get through the healers, so our next video we do will be the Shaman video. And then we'll sort of do a wrap-up video for um, all the healers and kind of talk about what we think uh, heading in. So we're going to go ahead and get started right away as we did last time. We talked about the available races for uh, Cleric. Now we're going to be talking about the av available races here for Druid. So it looks like the Archai, uh, Dark Mirror, Elf, Halfling, Human, and Ogre can all be Druids. Um, that's, for me, obviously coming from WoW, the WoW side of it, it's like, oh, a lot of things can be Druids. I don't remember how many things could be Druids back in EverQuest. Mostly Elves. So this is a pretty large list for Druids, right? Yeah. Um, ogres being the standout to me, that's, I mean, it makes sense. Primitive beings doing nature stuff, I, I get it. Yeah, and I've read a little bit more since our last video about the Archai. They are bonded elements from the Earth. Like, they're elemental beings. Yeah. So that Very much makes sense then. Yeah. So, so I guess it makes sense. It's funny, though. We have, uh, we had three races able to be a cleric and we have uh six able to be a druid so that's nice um obviously healing support utility using mana this uh class strictly uses mana uh and doesn't have a secondary source of power like some of the classes do in the game so that's pretty interesting as well when we look at the available armor cloth and leather i think that makes sense i don't think anybody would have thought any differently and when we look at the available weapons we have one-handed blunt two-handed blunt um, one-handed edged and shields. Really shocked that you can't use staffs. Yeah, that's a little weird. Two-handed blunt, uh, you know, like great hammers, stuff like that. It's going to be interesting to see. And a one-handed blunt with a shield is pretty interesting for a druid. So I, I think in EQ, druids use shields, right? It's hard for me to see a druid with a shield. Use uh, scimitars a lot in the request. Okay. Their epic one was actually a sword. Those scimitars. So in this game, we have one-handed edge with a possible shield. So maybe taking a little bit from uh, from EQ there. So it's pretty cool. So we're going to go down through the spells here. We'll be going left to right as we progress down. So the very first thing here is a passive ability, which a lot of your um, whole toolkit is going to work off of and also give you a whole secondary toolkit as well, which is, uh, again, with the butchering of words here, a um, size gift. Um, Herode the White Fox. Um, so it's a passive ability. I'm not going to read through all of this, but essentially it is a, a white fox pet, um, which will give you a bunch of different abilities and functionality during the fight. You'll be controlling the pet to do different things that will enhance your spells, which is pretty cool. Any thoughts on that? Pretty cool mechanic. Um, backtracking to when we said that it, oh, it's a, solely a mana user, I think that it's solely a mana user because it has. Uh, extra set of abilities to do with its fox. Yeah, it's very possible. You so you're not managing a secondary set; you're constantly managing your pet. Yeah, on both um, hostile and on um, ally players. Yeah, and as we talked about in the last video, you're going to have a, a offensive and defensive target, which will make that even a little bit easier to manage, which is pretty cool. Um, the next one over, there's. Just reading through here, it's we're gonna have to talk a little bit about this because I'm kind of curious on everyone's thoughts. But so this ability is called Harness Trait. It's a passive ability, um, and it says, as a living conduit of the nature world, you are able to harness the traits of natural things through tactile contact. Uh, once harnessed, you may imbue these traits into your allies and others. As you grow in power, you'll be able to harness more powerful traits from a wider variety of things. Only one trait may be active on a target at a time. So if you're reading ahead all uh, at all here, we're going to get down into these abilities called imbue traits. And I think that this ability plays to the imbue trait. 
And what's interesting if you read this is that it's saying um, through contact you get these abilities. So I don't know, and you guys can jump in here, but I don't know if you're able to get the ability and keep it harnessed or if when you're in the middle of a fight, you're literally walking over to a tree in order to harness the power from the tree. Do you guys, just reading it, I mean, does, what comes to mind for you guys? Well, I was curious about that too. And like a super basic assumption to make is that you would, to, to put, let's say, Imbutrate Panther's Claw on another player, you would have to touch a panther then because of the tactile contact wording, which is a weird. <laughs> I don't know if you'd be doing that mid-fight. Maybe it's a case of you can store them up over time or for a limited time and then give the buffs out based on how many of the, I don't know, contacts you've made. Or do you maybe before the fight or before you go on your journey, you walk through the woods and imbue everybody with the buffs and they just stay. Maybe they're not a time to buff. Could be. Too early to tell. Yeah, so we'll get into some of those traits a little bit more, but an interesting mechanic. Um, there's there's a lot. Druid is really different from what I'm used to with a lot of the abilities they have. So the next ability here, Reverberation, is a passive ability. When an ally is under the effects of any of your healing abilities and they're healed by another player in the group, that effect will jump to another group member as well. So... Obviously, the first thing you think of this is in a multi-healer group, this is a really powerful ability. Yeah, this secures your raid slot, like right there. So my mind getting ahead, and one of our promises, we'll try not to make this video as long, but it probably will be. Um, so Bard, what we know of any Bard we've ever played, they do have some sort of an AoE healing spell that just ticks slight healing. Does this work with that? And that's so much thought that's not even out yet. Bard's not even in here yet. We know it's coming, but if that... That's even a consideration yet. <laughs> Anyone's... But I'm just saying that would be really cool. So, uh, Shao, any thoughts on that ability? I was, well, the cleric has like a, like a chain heal. Would it, would it bounce on each target? Oh. The one that bounces and gets stronger for every target. Right. Does that double this for every... T anyway. Wow, yeah, so if you had Some three... Cool stuff could come from this. Yeah. If, if you had three uh, three of your hots out and you chain heal those three, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. The next one here is really interesting too, and it opens up to some areas having a druid pull. Uh, it's a passive ability that your... Uh, Covenant with Nature World has cultivated a unique sense of trust from the animals of Terminus, making most of them unlikely to attack you unless provoked. So wild I'd wonder, didn't uh, Druids have that in EQ? Yeah. So unless it was like had some kind of uh, rabid effect or undead or rotting or something like that, most animals, 99% of animals, wouldn't even look at you twice. I remember I had a friend who played a Druid, and I just remember this time being... We are killing stuff, and he's just like, "No, I can't kill these Save things. the wolves." Awesome. Okay, these next two abilities are so cool. Um, we have Storm Warden, which is a passive ability. It is said that when a druid is present, they become the heart of any storm. While a storm is active in the area, you will receive X percent bonus to healing and damage you do with abilities. And that's indoors only, uh, just so that we can keep it on time here. We'll go to the next one. It's a, it's a play off of that. Epic skill, passive ability. Your communion with forces of nature is now absolute, allowing you to maintain Storm Warden bonuses e even indoors. So that's really cool. Uh, yeah. Sha, what do you... I want it to be stormy. <laughs> yeah. Sha, what do you think of that uh, as far as tying into the environment? Oh, it's... it's that's awesome with the, the um, like later on we'll talk about the, the bridges that they can make, and the the lights and stuff, uh, the environment and it's great, it's good, it's good stuff. Yeah, they have a lot of ties to the environment for sure. Yeah, but it's pretty cool. So one of the things we do know about Pantheon is that they are going to, um, the the environment will affect you. 
right? So if it's really cold and snowing, you may actually have a damage over time or slow regeneration. It's going to have a negative effect on you. And there's going to be a lot of different um, various weather effects in the game. It's pretty cool that a druid can sort of play off of those storms. So the next uh, seven abilities here are imbue traits, which I think har uh, are off of the harness trait, which we're not 100% sure how these are going to work. We talked a little bit about that. Um, so you have uh, essentially seven different buffs you can put on party members, and they can only have one at a time. So you have Black Wolf Swiftness, which is a movement speed. You have Oaken Regeneration, which increases your healing on the target and improves health regen. You have Panther's Claw, which increases strength and armor class and actually makes them nearly impossible to stun with physical attacks. Um, we have Swift Gills Fin, which is uh, breathing underwater and swimming speed. Um, Veil Hawk's Grace um, allows the target to jump higher and allows them to glide while falling. And we have two more. We have Grizzly's Resilience. This trait increases stamina and armor class. Uh, of your target and makes them like less to be stunned by physical so that is similar to panthers except for instead of strength you have stam um, and then the last one here thunder paws resilience uh, increases stam and armor of your target and makes them nearly impossible to stun with physical attacks and it says here that it replaces uh, grizzly's resilience so it must be a second level spell of it uh, remember guys this isn't all the spells the game's going to have this is sort of the base that they're working on now um, so that one looks like it's an upgrade over the other. So the, these abilities come from harness trait. That's what we're thinking. That's the going theory. Yeah. So you know, like when you when you're going to kill kill something and you you gotta, you gotta like kill ten harpies, right? You you go to a certain area. Do you do you pick up like say imbo trait oaken regeneration? Like is, is, does it go with where where you're at in the game or what? Yeah, that's that's the big debate that we're not sure. Um, you know, what I was saying is maybe you have to run through the wilderness for a second and get everybody the buff that would work for them best. You know, something like Swift Gills Finn, I imagine you can do near water, so that's probably right. easy to apply. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. It's it's own part of me thinks that you have some kind of reagent, but I'm not sure. Yeah, and you can hopefully save them up over time. It's it's interesting, and just reading it, it's it's nearly impossible to accurately say this is exactly how it's going to work. But I feel like it's probably going to be one of those two, one of those two or three things. So mantle, and, and before I jump to the next one, there's a lot of buffs there. That's a lot of different useful buffs that you can have. Um, anything from combat to mobility. Um, so traveling can be nice, or actually in combat. Uh, you know, putting Oaken Regeneration on a tank looks like that's going to be huge. Um, and, you know, your healing's buffed. So there's a lot of really good stuff there. Um, Mantle of Leaves. You gather leaves uh, to yourself and form them into a mystical cloak, making yourself invisible to living, non-magical targets, outdoors only. So a stealth that doesn't work against undead and magical targets. Uh, next one, Firefly. That's your weak light source, so you'll be able to have a weak, a weak light source uh, in a dungeon that's darker. And as we said before, it seems like there's going to be a lot of dark areas in the game. Uh, and when I say dark, it's like very dark, hard to see. I don't even know if gamma increase will help. They specifically say weak light. Is there a strong light? or? Yeah, for other classes might have abilities to get stronger light sources. Or you might be able to carry torches. A weak yeah. light would, would cover you, like yourself. You could see, you know, small area, small radius. Yeah, and again, it might be one of those spells that gets better over time, too, and that you could upgrade it to have a better light source. Not sure. The next one's awesome because I've never seen it in any game. Yeah, this is one of my favorite ones I've read so far. Right, so uh, Wine Woven Bridge. Form a bridge out of interlocking vines, allowing you and others to cross a gap that is too wide to jump across. I've never seen anything like that in an MMO. I, just, I really like the emphasis on interacting with your world that I'm seeing in, in these. They have a knockback, too, with a root. You can knock them back, root them, lay a bridge, get out. <laughs> yeah, it's a good running tactic. I wonder if you could destroy the bridge. I just start, quick guys run across this bridge, and then just 
watch the other target jump out down to its death. We're gonna have to create a playbook, and then when right. we call out this play, we're gonna do all these things, and we're gonna have to know how to do them. On it's gonna be fun. Drop the cleric shield. All right, we're gonna need a, a V three sixty here. We're gonna have our druid pull a a post route. That's awesome. And the last one here, um, similar to EverQuest, Wandering Stones. Essentially, there's going to be stones put around the world, and the Druid is going to be able to teleport between them and probably their group as well. Um, so you'll have... We're assuming... We haven't read Wizards yet, but assuming Wizards can teleport. Um, and we obviously have our first class that we've seen here that can teleport in the Druid. And perhaps there is even more to these stones than most realize. Spooky. I just like that little adage. It's good. Yeah. Okay, going down into the healing abilities, uh, Varenfire Seed. Uh, long story short with this, uh, interesting wording that I think is overcomplicating this a bit, but essentially you put a seed on a target and it's going to um, reduce damage taken. It's going to absorb X amount of damage. And then essentially once it, that amount X is uh, absorbed, it's going to explode into a heal. And that heal is going to actually refund you mana based on the effective heal. So it's a pretty cool spell. What makes this interesting is that it has this weird text that I don't know if later on you're going to be able to manipulate. I don't even know why they would put it in. But it says here that you can apply it to as many targets as you like, but only one seed may be active on a target at a time. Oh, because I'm dumb and I read it wrong. Okay, so you can spread this out. <laughs> I thought it was said that you could only um, have one of those seeds active. Like, well, then why the hell would you put it on everybody if only one's going to be active? So pretty cool. That's your um, damage reduction, sort of uh, prayer amending type of heal. Um, if I'm understanding it right, so I can cast it on my whole group, but only one will do its absorb thing at a time. Is that what that means? Well, that's see, and that's why I said I'm stupid, because that's the way I read it the first time. But it says here that I think it's per target is what they're saying. Um, so you can apply it to as many targets as you want, but only one seed may be active on a target at a time. So I think you can't okay. stack it. So when I first read it, I read it exactly like you're saying right now. But when I read it this time, I was like, oh, okay, you can't double stack it on a target. It can be on five targets, but each target can only have one application of it. It's a really weird way to word it. But it looks like there's also going to be a cooldown. So someone who has that healing effect go off is actually going to then take a debuff where you can't put it on them for a certain amount of time. Shao, anything with that one? It looks pretty straightforward. Looks fun. It's not straightforward at all. <laughs> it's the least straightforward. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's, oh, I like it. it's probably a lot easier than we're making it out to be. Uh, Preserver's Wildfire, so you animate three tendrils of Verdun Fire that lash around you wildly, damaging, damaging any enemy and healing any ally they touch. These tendrils grow longer and reach further every second for the duration of this ability. You will also be able to add, animate more than three tendrils based on your wisdom, intelligence, and constitution. Um, so this does AoE damage and AoE heals, and if I'm not mistaken, this was what we saw in the stream, with the yeah, big green the, explosions. Yeah, Being super, like, pointed out looked good yeah it looks really good it's interesting though that they just pop out and swing around so i don't know what type of control you're gonna have on that um next one here uh vine woven grove you encircle yourself with a wall of vines enemies must deal x damage to break through it um you also regenerate uh x percent of your max health while you're in it so you get attacked you can pop that on yourself um, any movement cancels the effect. I wonder if you can sit. You can what now? I wonder if you can throw that on and then sit and meditate. No, oh, probably. So that's interesting. That's a way to protect yourself a little if you need to mana up or if aggro gets to you. I wonder what X is. Yeah. It, you know. It'd be interesting. See what you can do with it. Yeah, that's what we were saying too with Cleric. It felt like... It's kind of hard to understand the full capacity of a spell when there's all these XYs that aren't defined. Without values, yeah. Okay, weave the wind. Um, you weave the winds into a small tempest in front of your allies, stopping all physical ranged attacks from inflicting damage on the target for a short period of time. Really cool. 
throw that on a tank who's range pulling. Yeah, I like how the druid's more, like it's a little shaping up to be a defensive healer, like with um, absorptions and this kind of stuff. It's neat. Yeah, and what's interesting is I know that in EQ, and I know for sure it's not going to be this way, but in EQ, like the main healer was cleric. Even though other classes could heal, you had to have a cleric, and they had to be co casting complete heal nonstop in a chain, and it was really honestly looking back it was absolutely poor mechanic um so in this game they've been very clear to tell you there's not a main healer each healer can do what it does on its own so this next one's really cool so if you think about <laughs> there's a couple things about this that are cool if you think about like uh, all the spells in wow that put a circle on the ground it's like stand in the goddamn circle um this one here's green is good. above it below it and anywhere they can get but in it yeah, I'm just like that one person. Them, they run out of it. <laughs> Shao is a shaman in WoW, so that healing rain. I know as a tank, I've, I've, I've stepped out of it at times. So, yeah. Um, so this one here is pretty cool. You um, create a big tree. Uh, so stand near the damn tree. Um, all allies within a certain distance of the tree will receive healing over time. The amount of healing you uh, receive will increase as you're closer. And your pet, Rode, will um, do some added stuff if they have active abilities. So pretty cool things there. Um, and basically your Varen Fire seeds um, will have an increase. And uh, your vines that you cast will also um, heal. So there's some added stuff to some of your other abilities, which are pretty cool. Okay, uh, so looking at Herode's abilities. Really cool stuff here. It looks like you'll have some management to do, but if your group is handling things correctly, I don't think it's going to be too chaotic. So I'll read through them. Essentially, um, you can ask him to do a straight heal to an ally for a moderate amount. That's uh, Herode's flame. Uh, Herode's gaze, um, you can set the gaze on an enemy, and it reduces their nature and fire resistance. So that's really cool if you have a wizard in the group and something's already weak to fire. Uh, shelter. So this one's a non-tank ability. Um, you ask them to stand behind one of your allies, or beside, um, and when they're near, all healing the target receives is increased. Uh, additionally, the target's action will generate less hate. Um, Ooh, tank swaps. That's perfect for that. Yeah, yeah, that's actually a really good point. I didn't even think of that. Throw it on the uh, tank that's not swapped, or not tanking. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, you ask Corode, this is, uh, Chrysalis? Chrysalis? Chrysalis. Chrysalis. Um, you ask Corode to plant a mystical seed within your ally. When this ally takes damage, it would kill them. It prevents their death and blooms into a protective Chrysalis. <laughs> While inside the Chrysalis, the target cannot be damaged and will emerge with X percent of their max health and mana restored. It's like a pretty cool soul stone. We'll, we'll uh, go over all these abilities. I'm just kind of reading through them, and then we'll talk about the pet in general. Um, Herodas Focus, um, you put the focus on yourself and basically amplifies several of your abilities. Um, Herodas Presence is your tank heal. Um, when she is near, uh, the target receives healing. Herodas will actually heal a percentage of that amount again to the target. And then... It's much like the Holy Priest... Um artifact from legion isn't it that's what he did oh yeah the naru yeah that's interesting except for a lot more controllable yeah you pick who it, it casts on right on and herodes like herodes rescue <laughs> you ask herodes to bring your target uh bring your target group member to the center of the tree with supernatural speed herodes will leave a patch of rock vines where the ally was standing rooting the enemies in place and uh, you have to obviously have a tree up. So you have that uh, person that doesn't want to stand in the tree. You're standing in the tree. So overall, um, Sha, we'll start with you. What are your thoughts on the pet? Well, I wonder, like, well, the, the Re Herodes rescue. Like, if somebody gets rooted or, st or stuck, crowd controlled somehow, I wonder if the dog can go over there and, and grab them and pull them to the tree still. Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't even think of that. Oh, if it can pull them out of a CC or something, yeah. I don't know. Pretty cool. And yeah, I mean, the, abil the abilities have, um, you know, 
a lot of different usage. I foresee myself either putting it on the tank in most cases or putting it on myself, depending on what those abilities are that are increased. Um, but it's also pretty cool to debuff the boss with it if you don't need the extra healing. So that's pretty neat. It depends too. Maybe you're a druid in a group and you're not in the healing role. They have another healer, so you can do a little bit more on the damage. There you go. Okay, and good. Look at that segue right into your offensive ability. <laughs> you're a pro at this. I'm real good. All right, so we have uh, Call Lightning. Uh, you call a bolt of lightning to strike your enemy, inflicting shock damage. If Call Lightning is used during a storm, strikes will inflict more damage. And there's a chance that up to two additional targets based on your wisdom and your current level. Additionally, if the target is wet, each strike will be guaranteed a critical hit. I love that. Is weather the impact? It is really cool to have environmental stuff. Like you kind of said it before with the bridge, just different things that act with the environment. Like that just so happens if you're in an area where it's raining, you have an advantage now. You know, that's pretty cool. No, I'm going to get excited if there's another class that can apply, like, a wet debuff. You would hope wizards, right? With the frost. And, and then you, like, wombo combo it, and then, all right, target's wet, call lightning, and set up these, these awesome moments, right? Or fights in, in the water or in caves where there's in water the rain, in the ground and yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah, I didn't even think of that in the water. And then we all die. That's it, because <laughs> the electricity channels through. Uh, Vernfire Vines, you grow a network of mystical vines around the members of your group. These vines will reflect X damage of the physical and magical damage your group, uh, party members receive back at the enemy. And that's the oh, one. Nice. Yeah, essentially. That's awesome. And if you see um, having the tree down and having... Uh, oh, it, it empowers this, yeah. Yeah, it empowers it to do some healing too. It's pretty cool. Uh, Vernfire Spear, you hire a... <laughs> you hire... You hurl a spear of pure Varen fire at your enemy, inflicting nature and fire damage. So they're they're very. It's interesting because a lot of their spells are storm like electricity, but then their nature is mixed with a lot of fire. Yeah, it, I like the uh, improvement from Herode on this too. Yeah, so it acts as a silence if you're gazed at the enemy. Upheaval, you cause the ground beneath you to quake and roll, pushing all nearby enemies up X meters away from you. If Faraday's focus is active when you use this ability, you may activate wine, Vine Woven Grove without triggering its cooldown. So this, this is actually telling us, remember how we said we weren't sure what abilities would be amplified? The, the vines, and it looks like the tree, are both amplified. Um, upheaval, that's kind of, is that like a little gravity flux? Um, it's a lot like Typhoon. Was that what it's called? The Druid ability in WoW? Where they push push it back? But it's not directional. It looks like it's all around you. Okay. Rock, vein, rock Vine Tangle. You cause powerful thorn-covered vines to erupt from the ground and entangle your enemy, rooting them for X seconds and dealing moderate damage over time. This effect cannot be broken by damage. If Herodes' gaze is active on the enemy... This ability will crack your enemy's defenses, reducing their armor class by X. So it's like, is this a... It looks single target, right? An unbreakable root with a dot. And an armor class debuff. That's pretty cool. That's, uh, I mean, I hate PvP, and we'll never really talk about PvP much, but in PvP, <laughs> that'd be broken as hell. <laughs> yeah. Um... If it was Blizzard, they'd just be like, uh, Rock Vine Tangle doesn't work in PvP at all. And you can't have a pet. Last point one seconds. <laughs> uh, gust of Leaves, you send a strong gust of cross-cutting winds that cut and leaves into your enemy's face, right in the face, interrupting their spell casting. If uh, Herda's Gaze is on the enemy, this ability will cause the next ability that lands on this enemy to critically hit. Nice comboing. Interrupt it, wizard, hit it with the big fire spell. Yep. I'm seeing Herod's gaze as being like a priority tor target, burn it down thing, so get him on there, do all the stuff to him. Because it causes silences, it causes critical hits, it causes all kinds of stuff on a 
and hostile target. Yeah, I mean, there's not. So that's that's interesting. You're going to be, you know, with the seeds and with the wildfires, looks like what you're going to be healing with in the tree. And I think in the video that we watched, um, he was healing with the preserver's wildfire the whole time in the stream. So it's pretty interesting. No direct heal, no direct AoE it's all prevention and responsive, so it's a very uh, preemptive style healer. Well, you could ask your pet to do a direct heal, right? The Road's Flame. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. I wonder how that'll heal. Yeah. And I wonder if your pet has mana or just cooldowns. That's a good point. And also, I don't see a, a cooldown here for, for the tree, so a tree could stay up a lot. Uh, it might function a lot like the WoW Druid Effluescence, where it can have 100% uptime. You just got to keep putting it down. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird because some spells say X duration and some don't, but I don't know if I can assume that that means a spell is going to stay. Sort of like we talked about the imbued traits up at the top. Those buffs could stay for a long period of time. If that's the case, then, yeah, getting those buffs, however you have to get them in nature, is not going to be that bad because you put it on everybody and you're good to go. Just don't wipe. Yeah, do they persist through death? Do they last an hour? Well, that's what I was saying in the last video, too. We need, it would be nice to have durations, cooldowns, costs, that kind of stuff in, in the descriptions here. Yeah, very much so. So, Xiao, I'm going to call on you first. Why don't you give us a quick rundown? What do you think of it? Uh, feel free to compare it to the Cleric if you want. Um, where's your head at as a healer? Do you think this is a class you'd want to play, or are you still leaning towards a, a Cleric? What are your thoughts? Um, I want I want to play a DPS, but if I was to to pick a healer, I, this looks like a lot of fun. But the all the traits, the 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 pet, I mean that you can you can pick up from Harness Trait, being able to um, see in the dark, make bridges, it's good stuff. Want yeah, to play. <laughs> yeah. Can we just play, please? Um, hi, yeah, what do you think? What are your thoughts between the two? Um, I think this one is going to have a much higher skill seal because of pet management and it's got a bit more environment interaction. Like, it's, I think anyone could be good with this class, but like, there's going to be some greats that stand out if they can do the right things at the right time and finding those windows and taking advantage of them. I feel like you're going to have to get reps in on some things to, to learn what's yeah. going to happen when to be able to, yeah. Very it. similar to like a Disc Priest. Disc yeah, Priest really. Maybe. Yeah, it's an interesting class. Um, I love the pet healing. Um, you know, Final Fantasy XIV did that with a scholar. You had a fairy that you could command around, and it was pretty cool. It was a neat mechanic. So this is, this is a pretty awesome mechanic in my eyes as well. It's, I was never a big fan of Druid healing in WoW because I'm not a huge just put dots on stuff and let them roll type of person. And this is different. This feels a lot different. It's preemptive. Yeah. It's not cookie cutter heal either. Like it's, it's I don't know, involved. It's just very different. Yeah, it's very involved. And again, whenever we finally hear about that Bard class, um, <laughs> this could be huge with a Bard. I just keep seeing, you know, thinking through what, I envision a bard being looks like it would be a great, great synergy with the uh, druid, at least if I'm close at all with what my thoughts are, but I guess we'll get there another day. I think okay. it makes some parts of the game where you, you have to have a druid to be able to get to certain places. Or to skip stuff. Right. Yeah, this, I mean, they're not going to have like Mythic Plus in this game, but this would be the, the rogue stealth 
<laughs> equivalent, I guess. But yeah, I mean, that bridge thing is awesome. It, it, depending on how they design the world, just for travel, that could be huge. Uh, getting to another part of a dungeon without having to go through a ton of mobs, there could be a lot of really cool things. Um, yeah, this is no, no instances, that, right? And which was the one um, in Bew, Veilhawk's Grace, where it's, it's like slow. This, these guys are kind of good at mobility and giving other people mobility. And I can't wait to see how much higher you can jump. Right? Like, I hope that's, I hope it's really significant because that would be really cool. And it just reminds me when we were running around in EverQuest and you had Levitate on us and we were just going to high points and we were just constantly flying real high up. All right, everybody, so that is our quick discussion. A little bit faster this time. You guys won't have to sit and listen to us BS over and over, and hopefully the volumes will be a lot better. Um, as we said, we're probably going to be going through the healing classes, so we'll go to Shaman next. Um, I'll give a Twitter announcement out when that's going to be uh, in process. Um, and then after that, I figure we can sit down and we'll kind of just do a quick video discussing the three healers, uh, what our thoughts are on the healers, and then uh, from there we'll have a debate on whether we're going to go into the DPS or tank classes um my guess would be probably the dps but uh, we'll see where that goes everybody thank you for uh watching uh please subscribe to us on youtube it is huge for us um spread the word out there if you like this video and please give us any feedback that you have we're very new to this so we're going to make mistakes and we're totally cool with you pointing them out um so go ahead and let us know what you'd like to see if you'd like to see any specific videos in the future um as we get towards the release of pantheon um we're all up for ideas so uh, hit us up on Twitter at, at Pantheon Plus. Check us out on the YouTube stream here. And uh, thanks, everybody. Have an awesome night. Thanks, everyone.